please join with me in the words of the call to worship a leader and people response. The morning stars profess God's glory. The walking birds harmonize a refrain of grace. The sun warms us with God's hope. The night sky whispers peace to our sleepy souls. Creation's voice echoes continually in our hearts, reminding us of God's steadfast love. Our wisdom is shattered by God's absurd love. God's vulnerability strengthens our feeble faith. God's words place joy in our hearts. We follow them to peace and hope. Lent calls us to journey with God. Let us worship God who walks with us this and every day. Then let's rise in body and spirit as we open worship in song this morning. We are God's people. loving and gracious God, we ask that your work may be done here on earth as it is in heaven, so that as we join together as community and as family, as sisters and brothers of Christ joined not only in this congregation but around the world, we invite your Spirit to touch us, to illuminate us, to find our way with you, so that together we may be that diverse family of creation, that God who bestows gifts upon each and every one of us, so that we might make real the manifestation of your Holy Spirit, not only in this place and in this day, but throughout this world and in our lives. May God therefore bless this service and all that we accomplish together. To the honor and glory of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. It really is a joy to welcome you to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. Even though many of us had to give up an hour's sleep to be here this morning, uh, we are here. Let's give each other a round of applause for getting here this morning. Now remember, whenever the clocks go forward or the clocks go back, whoever shows up at 9 o'clock, we're going to believe that they are early for the 11 o'clock. 
thinking that for them it might be 10 o'clock. Nobody laughs at anybody this morning. We just graciously move on through. But welcome to you as we gather for worship. It really is a joy to welcome you. As I look around, we've all been here at least once before. It really is a joy to welcome you to worship this morning. We also want to take an opportunity to extend a very special welcome to those who are worshiping with us online this morning. Uh, we have folks from all over the world who gather with us every Sunday uh, to bear witness and to share in worship with us. And for those of you who perhaps haven't yet had a look at one of our weekly broadcasts, I want to encourage you to go to our website and have a look uh, the, the today, uh, especially because we've added testimonials to our website uh, from folks around the world who join us regularly and who want to give you thanks for providing this vital service to folks who perhaps would otherwise not have a church family. So we want to welcome each and every one of you online this morning. You are a part of us and we are a part of you and we are so glad that you are with us this morning. Our ushers have taken a moment just to uh, send out the welcome packs this morning, so please do sign in for us. Let us know that you are here. Let us know that you are here. And let us know how we may be able to minister to you at your place of need. We also extend that uh, same greeting to those who are worshiping online, especially those uh, who are regular amongst us. We want to know and hear from you. So please do sign in for us as well on the website right where you are. You'll be able to sign in and let us know that you have been present and let us know how we may be able to minister to you wherever you are in the same way that we attempt to minister to one another here in this sanctuary this morning. So welcome to you. As you came in this morning, you should have received your orders of worship, and on the front you'll find the order of today's service, and inside, of course, as always, you'll find so much more information about our church and our community, ways in which we get to connect one with the other. So please do take a look at all of the announcements. As I say, not everything that we get to do as a church is announced on a Sunday morning, but we really do want you to connect with us as much as possible. A uh, few announcements for you this morning. If you would just bear with me, I'll try to run through them as quickly as possible. And then we also have a special greeting from the moderator of our denomination, the Reverend Elder Dr. Nancy Wilson. So we'll get through the announcements and to Nancy's announcement as quickly as possible. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you that Azania, our ministry to people of African descent, will be meeting today. That will be at 12.30. And how appropriate that they should be meeting today on the 50th anniversary of the crossing of the Selma Bridge. Uh, we want to remember and to acknowledge all of our heroes that uh, reminded us that we are a diverse peoples. Let's give our people of African descent a huge round of applause this morning. They will be meeting today in the Ryland Room at 12.30. This evening is our second Sunday creative evening service. That will be in the uh, lower level. Uh, I have exciting news for you this morning. Uh, the elevator is now working, and we have complete access uh, to the entire building. Um, and so uh, in the next week or so, the city will be coming in just to give its final stamp of approval on all of the updates on our building, um, and then we'll be able to uh, fully use and fully operate the lower level. If you've not yet been down there, I want to encourage you to go and have a look. It really is spectacular. Uh, second, second Sunday evening service tonight at 8 o'clock in the theater in the lower level of our building. On March the 21st, we're having an all-church worship summit between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. If you would like to uh, receive some training um, in being of service, especially in the worship services on Sundays, uh, then this is the, the event for you. Training for acolytes and servers, uh, for readers and ushers and sound people, for our choir, for multimedia, uh, for communication, hospitality, and uh, caregivers and greeters. Uh, please see uh, Pastor Tory this morning. He'll be able to give you more information. The day will be split into two halves. The first half of the day will be for those who want to be involved uh, in the mechanics of the upfront parts of worship, and the second half of the worships, uh, the summit, will be for those who are involved in multimedia and broadcast and sound. Uh, all of those components are vital to excellent worship, and so we appreciate all that you're able to give. Please do join us on Saturday, March the 21st, even if you are just curious. Uh, we want you to be a part of that day. Coming up on the uh, last Sunday of March and every fifth Sunday uh, will be our Founders MCC Fifth Sunday Gospel Service. Uh, that will be at 6.15 here in our church on March the 29th. And whenever there is a fifth Sunday in the month, which means that that is four times a year, uh, will be our fifth Sunday Creative Gospel Service. So please do come along and join us. Um, that, of course, this year is Palm Sunday. Uh, so what an appropriate time for us to gather. 
Inside your bulletins, you would have found a little slip for Easter lilies. If you would like to uh, purchase an Easter lily to beautify the sanctuary for Easter Sunday, uh, then please do so. Uh, you can stop by the information table and hand this in or hand it in to one of the ushers or even put it in the offering plate today. Uh, but we're inviting you to place your order, the number of lilies, and then, of course, in memory or in honor of. And uh, if there's not enough room on this, you can write on the back. Uh, and please try to make your handwriting as legible as possible because we do have to interpret this, and sometimes we do have to interpret this uh, for the bulletin on Easter Sunday. So uh, we appreciate all that you're able to do. Next Sunday is Marathon Sunday. Um, and that doesn't mean we're having a marathon of services. It means, of course, it is uh, LA Marathon. Uh, the route runs very close to Founders MCC. So it really is important for you to plan out your route for next Sunday. You have a whole week to do that, um, so uh, please don't leave it till the last minute, um, or not at all, or depend on your GPS to get you around uh, the, uh, the roads that will be closed. So please do plan out your trip uh, so that you can be here for next Sunday, uh, bright and early for our Sunday morning services. As I said, we do have an announcement this morning from our moderator, the Reverend Elder Dr. Nancy Wilson, and if you would just pay attention to the screens just for a moment, uh, we will hear directly from her. As you will see there, Reverend Nancy, just reminding us that nominations for the new moderator of our denomination are due on March the 15th. And the process is that nominations will be offered to the nominations committee, and then over the next month or so, they'll be approaching those nominations, those nominees, uh, to invite them to make application for the nomination process. The denomination then will proceed by offering at least five people, or up to five people, 
for election at the General Conference in 2016 to build on the pioneering work both of Reverend Elder Dr. Troy D. Perry and of Reverend Elder Dr. Nancy Wilson, the next six years of our denomination. Let's give Nancy a huge round of applause this morning. Now let's uh, rise as we greet one another and offer a sense of peace to each other. God bless you this morning. taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 30. Jesus realized that the Pharisees were keeping count of the baptisms he and John performed, although his disciples, not Jesus, did the actual baptizing. They had posted the score that Jesus was ahead, turning him and John into rivals in the eyes of the people. So Jesus left the Judean countryside and went back to Galilee. To get there, he had to pass through Samaria. He came into Sychar, a Samaritan village that bordered the field Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was still there. Jesus, worn out by the trip, sat down at the well. It was noon. A woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water. Jesus said, would you give me a drink of water? His disciples had gone to the village to buy food for lunch. The Samaritan woman, taken aback, asked, How come you, a Jew, are asking me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jews in those days would not be caught dead talking to Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink, and I would give you fresh, living water. The woman said, Sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw with, and this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well and drank from it, and he and his children and livestock passed it down to us? Jesus said, Everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an artesian spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. The woman said, Sir, give me this water so I won't ever get thirsty, won't ever have to come back to this well again. He said, Go call your husband and then come back. I have no husband, she said. That's nicely put, I have no husband. You've had five husbands and the man you're living with now isn't, e isn't even your husband. You spoke the truth there, sure enough. Oh, so you're a prophet. Well, tell me, tell me this. Our ancestors worship God at this mountain, but you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place for worship, right? Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you Samaritans will worship God neither here at this mountain nor there in Jerusalem. You worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of day. God's way of salvation is made available through the Jews. But the time is coming, it has in fact come, when what you're called will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. It's who you are and the way you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people God is out looking for, those who are simply and honestly themselves before God in their worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship God must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves, in adoration. The woman said, I don't know about that, but I do know the Messiah is coming, and when he arrives, we will get the whole story. 
I am he, said Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. Just then, his disciples came back. They were shocked. They couldn't believe he was talking with that kind of a woman. <laughs> no one said what they all were thinking, but their faces all showed it. The woman took the hint and left. In her confusion, she left her water pot. Back in the village, she told the people, come see a man who knew all about the things I did, who knows me inside and out. Do you think this could be the Messiah? And they went out to see for themselves. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. invite you to be seated and as the musicians and staff come and join us this morning I'm going to invite you to open your hearts and minds as we invite that spirit in and to illuminate this scripture for us this morning let us pray wow what a god what a god that we serve what a god that we have what a living experience of the spirit that continues to touch us as we open our hearts and minds to God. So be with us this morning as we prepare our hearts and minds now to encounter you, O loving Spirit. And through that grace that you bestow upon us day in and day out, may we therefore understand this good news that you have for us this day. Speak through us, O God, and our lives so that we might hear your voice of the ancient past greeting us and meeting with us fresh and anew this day. And now, loving God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the living Christ in whom we pray, amen. I don't know about you, but I've been having some great fun over the last few weeks as we have been exploring this Lenten journey. And for anyone who comes from a traditional experience, uh, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, hang on, preacher, you're not supposed to have fun during Lent. Uh, Lent is a time of sackcloth and ashes. Uh, Lent is a time of inward journey. Lent is a time where we deny ourselves, we take up the cross, and we follow Jesus all the way to the cross itself. But I want to tell you it has been a joy to be able to preach these sermons over the last few weeks as we've been thinking about our own spiritual locations, as we have been reminded that Lent, whilst it is a time of, of, of inward journey, it is a time when we must remind ourselves that we journey in our own accountability, our own responsibility, and in some ways with our own authority. We, we claim that spirit of truth that lives in each and every one of us, and we delve deeper into that truth. I truly believe that we should come out of Lent in a much deeper spiritual place than we entered into it. And in that experience, we find who this God is, this God that perhaps we've worshipped for a few weeks, or this God that we have worshipped forever and ever. We come to that space of renewal and dependence upon that greater power that we call God. And over the last few weeks, we've been thinking about how do we relate to God as individuals? We know that sometimes we have a way in which we relate to God in a corporate fashion or as a church fashion, as a mission church or as a, a place of worship. But how do we relate to this God and understand this God in our own sense of purpose? How do we understand this God so that we can deepen that experience as an individual with our own accountability to that one that we call God? 
And as you've been watching over the last few weeks, our compass is continuing to move round all the way, getting ready for Easter, preparing, and then finally to the resurrection itself. And we are today in this place of connecting. And our scripture reading this morning reminds us about how we get to connect with God. In fact, the woman at the well connected with God deeply through this experience of meeting with Jesus at the well that day. Now, there are some interesting things about this particular passage, and those of you who have perhaps read it over and over again have found new meaning and new insights every time that you have read it, but I just want to contextualize this particular passage of Scripture for us because it was given to us this morning from the message version, um, and so it's a paraphrased version. It's Eugene's way of, of, of kind of bringing the Scriptures up to date for us, and certainly there was some contemporary language in that particular passage this morning. Uh, but Eugene gives to us and unpacks that scripture just a little bit for us in our own contemporary understanding. But we need to understand some fundamentals about what was going on in this particular passage. Here we have Jesus who is on the way to Jerusalem and he has to go through um, Samaria. He has to go through some dangerous territory. Now, uh, we know that the Jews and the Samaritans didn't get on. Theologically, they didn't get on. And in the way that they practiced their faith and their religion, they didn't get on. These were a group of people who were on the outside looking in. These were a group of people who weren't considered true worshipers. Okay, how many of us have heard that about who we are today? We're not those true worshipers. Um, you know, and Jesus, Jesus is in that uh, terrible place on his journey. And not only is he in a terrible place in his journey, but he's also been abandoned by the disciples. They've left him on his own. It's like being left in bandit country. They've gone off to a safe place together to the village to go and buy some food for lunch, and Jesus is sat now at what is an extremely famous place, Jacob's Well. You can read about Jacob's Well in the Hebrew Scriptures. But it is that well, that fount of place of water that you would need to go to to draw deep from this well. It had been drawn deep from for many, many generations. And Jesus now finds himself sat at Jacob's well, and he's not alone. He's there with a Samaritan woman, somebody who's not allowed to talk to, someone who's not allowed to associate with. And someone who, of course, because they were of the opposite gender, they were to be, to, to be considered to be on the opposite sides of the fence. In fact, it would have been wrong for Jesus and for the woman to converse. Perhaps it would have even considered Jesus to be unclean. Yes. Now, now, we know that that is a truth because this woman is there on her own. She's not there with the, all the other women who would have come from the village that morning. And it says deliberately that this woman was there at noon. Now, noon was the hottest part of the day. Now, I know all about that. They always say mad dogs and Englishmen always go out in the midday sun. <laughs> now, of course, the woman was not a mad dog or an Englishman, but she was out there in the midday sun. She should have been there at the very break of dawn, at the coolest part of the day, when she would have gone with all of the other women of the village, and they would have gone and they would have drawn water. They would have carried that water back to the village. They would have shared and exchanged stories of their families. They would have shared stories and gossip, just as many of us do when we're gathered together somewhere. Oh, not, not one of us. We don't share gossip. <laughs> But they would have shared stories, perhaps even embellished upon things that were happening in the life of the church. Oh, no, no, I'm, wrong sermon. <laughs> wrong sermon. Uh, they would have been together on this journey. Yes. And we know that there was something about this woman that she was not able to be with the others. She was isolated. She had perhaps been ostracized. Now, Jesus gives us a hint about why this woman had been ostracized later on in the Scripture. <laughs> But this woman had been considered unclean on so many levels. And here she is now at that noontime day, drawing water from the well in the heat of the day, and she is meeting Jesus. And Jesus exchanged pleasantries with her. I'm sure she was shocked and perhaps even horrified, perhaps even looking around to see if she was even hearing what she thought she was hearing. He was a Jew speaking to her as a Samaritan. And not just condemning her, but asking her for water. 
draw water from the well of Jacob's well so that I might also quench my thirst. And in this conversation, this engagement, this, this way in which Jesus drew her in, there is the understanding of the reason why this woman is on her own at the noontime of the day. That's not what I want to focus on today. We can focus on that another time of the day. But I want to focus not only on this conversation, but what came out of the conversation. You see, Jesus met her at her place of need. There was a spiritual location that she found herself in. She had hungered for community. She'd hungered to be accepted by the women and wanted to be there in that morning so that she too could exchange pleasantries, exchange the gossip, exchange those lives that were being made in this village that she had come from. She had been so ostracized that now the only time that she could get to the well was at that noontime. She so wanted to be accepted. She so wanted to be forgiven. She so wanted to be on the inside and not on the outside looking in. She wanted community. She wanted connectedness. And that connectedness had been denied her because of something she had done in her life. Jesus encountered her where she needed. How many of us have been on the outside looking in? How many of us have wanted community? How many of us have wanted that connectedness? How many of us have wanted to find a place where we can connect with sisters and brothers and be accepted for just the way that we are? How many of us have made mistakes in our lives and those mistakes have been held against us over and over again, even though our lives may have moved on and changed? How many of us have been judged for something that we did when we were two years old and people are still holding it against us today? How many of us have lived in an environment where people say a leopard never changes their spot, so watch out, even though they might present really well, there is something underneath that is still burdening them, that is still very prevalent in them. There is something still about them that just at the flick of a switch will just re-emerge. Many of us have faced those dilemmas in our lives. I think that's why Jesus says a prophet is without honor in their hometown. This woman was without honor in her hometown. She was without honor. She was without forgiveness. She was without grace. She had found herself in a spiritual location where she wanted to be loved. She wanted to be accepted. She wanted to be spoken to. But she had spent many, many, many days going to that well in the noonday on her own. She perhaps had even built a wall around her. She perhaps had built some defenses around her so that the words of others could no longer hurt her, so that the judgments of others could no longer attack her, so that the time when, when perhaps she had relapsed and people said, knew it was going to happen, and she had built a wall around her so that no matter what was coming at her, she was able to deflect it in her own life. You see, many of us can see ourselves as the woman at the well that day. People of African descent thinking about crossing that Selma Bridge and asking themselves, can I do this on my own or do I need to do this in community? People who are LGBT thinking to themselves, can I cross that bridge as President Obama referred to yesterday? Can I cross that bridge? Or do I need my community? Do I need to be in a group? Do I need to find my spiritual location with others like me so that we can be in this together? Many of us could sit at that well with Jesus. And Jesus met her at her place of need just as Jesus meets us at our place of need this morning. Jesus invited her to drink of living water and revealed to her that he was the Messiah. He was the one that she had been waiting for. She was the one that the world had been waiting for. And all she needed to do was to drink of this water and she would never thirst again. 
Of course, theologically, she didn't get it. She said, give me that water so I don't have to come back here tomorrow at noontime. But Jesus knew that there was something much, much deeper that he was offering her. The encounter with Jesus not only met her at her place of need, but set her on fire. It set her and brought down all of the defenses in that when she returned to that village, she didn't care of the women who had ostracized her. She didn't care about the community that had rejected her. She went right into the middle of the group and said, hey, come with me, hear the good news. Come and see a man that I have met who told me absolutely everything about me. She broke down everything. Jesus had broken down every piece of defense of everything that she had hungered for. And on fire, she went back to her village. And those women, astonished and confronted by this good news, couldn't resist but come and meet with Jesus themselves. You see, sisters and brothers, when we have a real experience of Jesus sat at the well with him this morning, we can do nothing less but go back to those places that have rejected us, those places that have hurt us, those people that have ostracized us, those people that have condemned us, and bring the good news of Jesus to them as well. That is the mission and vision of Founders Metropolitan Community Church to reach beyond who we are to those who have estranged us, to those who have left us out. And the fire of Jesus in our belly this morning comes and says, come and see. Come and see this good news. Come and see this Jesus that I've met. Because being in community, being connected one and another encourages us and gives us that love of God that we hunger for this morning. It is that well that is dug deep into the earth, dug deep into the earth of our own souls this morning that invites us to meet with Jesus who sat with the woman at the well more than 2,000 years ago and sits at our place of need this morning and invites us to be connected one with the other, to be connected, to forgive those who have hurt us, to be on fire so that knowing that those who have hurt us have perhaps done it because there is something that is hurting in their lives that they too need healing and restoration from. And if not us, who? If not us, who is going to bring the good news of God's salvation? I invite us in this moment to find our spiritual location of being connected one with the other. When we connect one with the other, we are so much stronger together. When we connect one with the other, we hear the stories of each other. We hear how God has impacted Darcel's life. Now, Darcel's been sharing with me that she picked up the B card for uh, B Justice. And she has just come back from Washington where she has not only been justice, but she has been meeting with senators and telling them all about what they need to do to change this world. <laughs> you see, that's what it means to be justice, to be created, to be on fire with this connectedness. If Darcel had not been here, she wouldn't have been able to pick up on this, be justice, to be connected with this community. Jesus sat at the well with you that day and said, be justice. Be what you need to be in order that you can change not just the world, but change you. Because your encounters change you. The encounter with Jesus this morning. Be connected. We might think that all people are an island, but we're not. I think we have lured ourselves into that false sense of security because when we're an island, no one can hurt us. No one can damage us. Well, no more than we already are. But the invitation of Jesus is to heal those places of our lives and be connected one with the other. I don't know what happened to the woman after she had invited all of the other women back to the well. It was, it was of course, had gone past noon, so perhaps it was even hotter when she finally got back to meet with Jesus. But what we do know is that her connectedness, her connection with Jesus, made a difference that day. And our connectedness with Jesus and with one another must make a difference today. 
I invite each and every one of us to get connected. And I'm not talking about Wi-Fi or broadband or any of those connectedness. But get connected with each other. Get connected when we need one another. Get connected when we're on fire for one another. Get connected when we've heard the good news of Jesus and we just can't keep it to ourselves any longer. Get connected to this fire of God that prepares us for resurrection in just a few weeks' time of Easter. And just like the woman, wherever our place of need is, if we have an encounter with Jesus, our lives will be transformed. May God bless us as we continue this Lenten journey. May God bless the woman at the well, a Samaritan, who taught us what it means to meet with Jesus. Let us pray. God, thank you for the woman in the story today. Thank you that you bring to us so many layers that we have to filter down through, some that we might even overlook because we don't understand the fullness of the context. But thank you this morning that you have helped us to understand our need for connectedness just as the woman at the well needed to be connected because of the transformation that happened in her life that day, so may our worship experience be connected with us so that we might be energized to go back out into the world and to share this good news, this spiritual location that touches us this morning with a need to be in community, connected with you to make a difference in the world. And now, loving God, I pray that you would touch each and every word that has come from my mouth, that it might not return to you without transforming this place, transforming our lives, and reminding me of this good news that I preached this morning. May God be honored through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to introduce to you a new song today, and so you're welcome to follow along, to sing along, but just to worship God in that connection to Jesus. like this. We are your church. We are your sons and daughters. We've gathered here to meet with you. We live
connected to this church than by singing together with all of you, being given the blessing of a new song, and being given the freedom and the opportunity to give. Yes. That, is, that is how I stay connected. I give my time, I give my talent, and I give my treasure. I ask that you give the same as you're able, please. seated. And as we come to this moment, I invite you to pray. You saw your children as slaves in Egypt and brought them to freedom. You see creation held captive by our desire for more and more and weep. And so you pour out your foolish love on us from day to day. All that we have learned and think we know has not brought meaning to our lives. 
The brokenness of our world needs your peace. Our pain-shattered hearts need your healing. And so you speak to us through the mouth of your servant, Jesus. All creation weeps with grief and cries to you for comfort. All the broken of our world long for your wholeness. All who hunger for hope long for the sweetness of your grace and joy. And so, God, as you fill us with the wisdom of your spirit, we ask, O oh God, that you would remind us of the diverseness and the diversity of your creation, that we are connected one with the other, sister and brother of all race, gender, color, sexual orientation, gender and gender identity. God in community, holy in one, we tell of your glory from day to day, even as we pray, as Jesus has taught us, as we sing the words of Jesus. At the center of the spirit is God's love. Mm -hmm. That divine nonsense shown in becoming human for our sake. That weakness for us which defeats the strongest powers. This love, this grace is of more value to us than all the stocks in our pension funds. Mm -hmm. In our moment of silence, let us open ourselves to such love as we open our hearts to confess our sins to God. <clears throat> and if you would join me in the community prayer of confessions. Forgive, forgive us, us redeemer, redeemer of our, our lives. May, may every word be shaped by your word, may and may every thought be refined by your grace. May every deed be inspired by your spirit, so we may tell everyone we meet of your work in us, through Jesus Christ, amen. When brokenhearted prayers replace piety, when we seek wholeness through the one broken for us, then we remember we are saved by God's powerful love. We are healed to bring healing to our world. We are strengthened in faith to become spent for others. We are set free from our love of sin so we may become servants of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.
The God of holy words is with you. And also with you. People of God, open yourselves to the one who is your rock. God, God fills, fills us with, with foolishness, foolishness so, so we may be wise. People of God, sing songs of thanksgiving with all creation. Our voices are lifted to the one who makes all things. Therefore, with those who have great faith, with those who have very little, we sing our thanksgivings to you. As we remember his zeal for your heart, as we remember his passion for us, we would speak of that mystery we know as faith. For on the night that Jesus was to be taken from us, he gathered with his disciples. Taking bread from the table, he blessed it, he broke it, and he said, this is my body given for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. And likewise, following the supper, he took from the table of cup, some say the cup of Elijah the prophet. He blessed it and offered it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, and in doing so, remember me. Here at this table, God of love, we set aside our power to feast on the weakness found in the broken bread. We let go of our wisdom to drink from the cup of your foolish grace. Your spirit blesses these gifts as well as us. So when we have feasted, we will look at the world with its injustices, oppressions, wars, and fears, saying, take these things out of here. Hmm. Stop making God's creation a house of horrors. Hmm. Hmm. And when the sun has finished its course, when the moon and stars shine no more, we will be given the words from your mouth so we can sing from the deeps of our hearts to you. God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. Friends here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church and at Metropolitan Community Churches all around the world, we serve and celebrate an open communion. By this, we mean that you do not need to be a member of this church or indeed of any church in order to come and receive of communion this morning. If you would like to come and receive, you're welcome. We invite you to come forward to acolytes and servers that will be at the front of the church. They will take a wafer, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice and place it on your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive of yourself. And we'll offer you a short prayer of blessing. If you wish to come and receive these sacraments without the need for another person to be an intercessor for you, uh, there will be a station of consecrated elements to my left, your right, that you can go at any time and receive of these sacraments yourself. And for those of you who are worshipping with us online, it's an opportunity for you to find water and biscuit or Perhaps, uh, of course, biscuit in my country means something different. Uh, but, uh, or, or milk and cookie, or something that would uh, constitute uh, this sacrament for you, uh, so that you too can engage with us in your connectedness this morning. But know that wherever you are, whether you are here in this sanctuary or whether you are at home, this meal is prepared and given for each and every one of us. And we are all welcome at the feast. With the ushers, acolytes, and servers, please come forward, and if we would all follow the direction of the ushers, that would be most helpful this morning. God bless you.
So feel connected to the source this morning, that source that met the woman at the well and who meets us wherever we are this day. Amen. Amen. Let's rise in body and spirit as we close worship in song. now unto God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.
you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 